is the mark scheme for checkpoint four about refraction. So here's our first question. We've got um, a light ray here coming into a prism. Uh, angle of incidence 15 degrees, angle of refraction there 10 degrees. So confirm by calculation the refractive index. So we go n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Um, so we're going to assume that n1 is uh, 1 because this is in the air. So we've got sine theta 1, so that's sine of 15 degrees equals n2, the refractive index of the prism, times sine theta 2, which is sine 10. So n2 equals sine 15 divided by sine 10, which is 1.49. Okay, just one mark for that, hopefully fairly straightforward. So on figure 1, draw the um, continuation of the path of the ray until it merges back into the air. Now the crucial thing here is that you've got to work out the angles that you need. So the first job here is to continue this ray till it hits the edge of the block here. But the important thing is that you need to understand that we need this angle here. So you've got to look at this diagram and work out how to find that angle. The way I would suggest that you do it is that you work out that this angle here is 100 degrees. It's a 45 degree prism, so this is 45 degrees. Okay, that makes this angle 35 degrees to make these three add up to 180. But then the angle of incidence is from the normal here, so this angle here is 55 degrees. Okay, now it tells us the critical angle is 45 degrees or less than 45 degrees, so the light will reflect. Uh, sorry, the light will reflect up to there. Then we've got to look at this triangle. Okay, and actually the way this works is this is a reflection, so this is 55 degrees. That means this is 35 degrees. So actually this triangle is the same as that triangle down there, so this is 45 degrees. That means that this angle here is 100 degrees, which makes this one 10. So it leaves here with this angle being 15 degrees. So quite a lot of work to do there to get your two marks but you do need to do that process of working around all the triangles to work out the missing angles. Okay, here's a slightly more tricky version where we've got a second prism. Um, so calculate the angle of refraction. Well, we've already done the first bit of work here. Okay, from the first diagram, we know that this is 55 degrees. Okay, so now we can do uh, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. And we know that N1 previously was 1.49 uh, times sine of 55 equals N2, which is given us up here as 1.37. So 1.37 times sine of theta 2. So sine of theta 2 equals 1.49 over 1.37 times the sine of 55 degrees. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll find that is 63 degrees. Always do that little check, okay, where you can see that this is going, um, it's increasing its speed as it comes out of here. This is a lower refractive index material, so it will bend away from the normal. So the answer must be more than 55 degrees. If you do the maths wrong here, or if you rearrange, if you rearrange the equation incorrectly, Okay, you're going to get an answer here like maybe 48 degrees, which will show you that it's gone the wrong way. Calculate the speed of light in prism 2. Well, we know the refractive index of prism 2, so remember the equation um, for the speed of light in a material. So the speed of light in material 1, or let's call it material 2 because it's prism 2 in this case, is the speed of light in the vacuum divided by the refractive index. I notice some people here... Um, what they do is they work out the speed here and then they slow it down again when it comes here. It doesn't matter what it's come from, its speed here will be the same. It won't get slower and slower and slower. Okay, so this is 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.37, okay, which gives you 2.19 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Draw the path the ray would follow to emerge. So. We've worked out that angle there, so this angle here is 63 degrees. 
so it's got to refract away from the normal layer. And then when it comes out here, again, it must refract away from the normal because it's speeding up as it goes into the air. Okay, question two. This is quite an unusual question. Uh, the first job is to complete the rays. So it doesn't matter what's going on with the refractive index here. This one is going to go straight up here. Okay, I think I've drawn those on. So this one is undeviated, whatever the refractive index. This one here, we're not trying to calculate it, but this one will be refracted out. Again, you've got to make sure it bends the right way. It's going from a more dense material down here to a less dense material. It's going to speed up. That's going to make it bend away from the normal. But by the time you've got to this one over here, then the critical angle of this, as we'll find out in a minute, is less than 60 degrees. So this angle is more than the critical angle. So we'll get total internal reflection. You might reasonably ask how you're supposed to know that, but hopefully in a minute we'll see. Um, so what this is saying is this light that's come up here will come out of the surface. So you'll see the light, certainly in this region here, it will light up the surface of the water to somewhere over here, but somewhere in between these two, total internal reflection will occur. How are we going to work out where that is? Well, we need to find the critical angle. So if you imagine we've got this set up here, so this angle here is the critical angle theta c. So our first job is to work out the refractive index of the material. So this is refractive index of the water is the speed in a vacuum divided by the speed in the water. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.25 times 10 to the 8. Um, and that gives you uh, 1.33. So the next job is to work out the critical angle. So sine theta c equals 1 over n equals 1 over 1.33. So theta c equals the sine minus 1 of 1 over 1.33. And that gives you a critical angle of 48 point, oops, point 0.6 degrees. But remember, that's that angle in there. So this angle is 48.6 degrees. Um, you can do it however you like, but one way to do this is a kind of z-angle idea. If we go up there, down there, back up there, this angle here is 48.6 degrees. And then up here, it tells you this depth. So this distance here is your 1.5 meters. So I've got 1.5 and I want to know this distance here from this triangle. So I've got the adjacent, I want the opposite. Um, so tan of 48.6 is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Um, I've used R for because this is going to be the radius of the circle. So R equals 1.5 tan of 48.6. That's 1.7 meters. But this is the radius, of course, so the light will come out here as well. So when we're looking from above, we'll see the light in the middle and we'll see a circle of light that comes out. But the light that would have come out over here has been reflected back down into the pond. So the diameter is twice the radius, 3.4 metres. Okay, so quite an unusual question, that one, but always one to make you think.